Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Kim and I am a senior level quality assurance engineer. And today I wanted to talk about some of my favorite tools and apps that I use to be more productive on the job. These are some of these tools I've been using for years. Some of these I more recently discovered, but these are all tools that have helped me be a more efficient tester, a more productive engineer, and to just really speed up my workflow. These are all free apps, and most of these, I believe, are going to be compatible on Windows and Mac. So you're not gonna see my face much in this video because I'm just gonna do a voiceover, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first tool on our list is actually a Chrome extension, and this is called Environment Marker, which is probably like OP of all tools if you do a lot of web-based testing in a lot of different environments. You can add a flag that will look for specific URLs, regex, subdomains, and you can label fraud, QA, staging, dev, and easily see at a glance which environment your URL is pointing to. So if you have to flip between environments a lot, this is super helpful. You can also color code them. I usually have QA as green, staging as yellow, and prod is usually red. And that way, if I see that red flag somewhere on my browser, I know I am in production and I need to be very careful with whatever I'm doing in this environment. Okay, friends, the next Chrome extension that I want to talk to you about is a new one for me, and this is Fake Filler. If you do a lot of web-based testing and you have to fill out a lot of fields, Fake Filler is going to save you so much time. You can create specific rules to fill out all of your required fields, first name, last name, email address, which is really great. Now, the kicker for this tool, though, is that if you want all of your emails to not be just random data and you wanna get these emails, you can set up a rule that'll say, I want all of my emails to go to blackhole.io as the domain. But wait, there's more. If you wanna use fake filler to fill out a required field, you can say, actually, I want kombucha plus a random number or a random name at blackhole.io. And it'll allow you to fill out a form with the click of a button that's going to associate your test data to your email address, which is super great. Now, of course, if you're testing, you're not gonna use blackhole.io, you'll use your you'll use your work domain. But let's say you have multiple email address fields, but they're like email underscore address or primary underscore email address or whatever. It'll match whatever rules you put in here to find any email address that matches this string and allow you to fill it out with the click of a button. So it's a newer tool that I only just recently started finding out about. And I wish I would've knew about it earlier, but yeah, so like I said, you can do email, you could do name. If you want all your test accounts to say like kombucha test, you can do that. You can set up rules for phone numbers to have specific area codes for validation. You could do random numbers. You could add custom fields for whatever the fields are for your web form. Like it's an amazing tool and I wish I, again, that I wish I knew about earlier, but yeah. Okay, so once you have your fields all your custom fields configured if you find any text field and you right click and you select fake filler and you can select fill all inputs if it finds a field that matches it it will fill in whatever you told it to fill in with test data or a combination of like real data and test data it saves you so much time from having to fill out a form over and over so if you do a lot of web testing this tool is also like super high up on the list to help you save time testing. This next tool is for those of you who are QA engineers that have to deal with code bases or you're an aspiring automation engineer or SDA, and that is GitHub Desktop. This tool allows you to interact with Git repos without having to deal with the command line. Sometimes when you're just starting out or if you're just trying to learn, the command line can be a little bit intimidating and having to remember different Git commands can sometimes be overwhelming. So if you're someone who needs just a UI component for Git, this might be a good option for you. You can choose specific branches, specific commits. You can cherry pick things, deal with merge conflicts, all the things that you do through the command line just with the UI. Now I will say if you do have to deal with your local branches or if you're trying to be an automation engineer, you're going to need to learn Git. I'm not even gonna say want to, you're gonna need to. You need to learn the basic commands of Git through a command line because it's just gonna help you understand how Git works a bit better. But if you have to deal with branches 
and you just want something a little bit easier than say VS Code or just the straight up terminal, GitHub Desktop could be a good helpful tool to help you get familiar with dealing with branches. All right, this next tool is like industry standard for software engineers and that is an IDE, but this one in particular is a free one called VS Code. And I say it's industry standard because it's free and almost every company that I've worked at over the last like 10 years has basically used VS Code for development and automation and it allows you to write your automated scripts, whether they're front end or back end in a free tool with syntax highlighting and IntelliSense. You can add different integrations for different testing tools like Playwright or Cypress. You can also integrate with Git, Docker, um, AWS, whatever you need. It is huge and it has a very large support and user base. If you're someone that's trying to get into test automation or just learning about code in general, I think VS Code is a great tool to start and help you get familiar with. If you look up most test automation tools, modern ones, or like test automation tutorials, a lot of them use VS Code. So if you are watching tutorials on YouTube or any course, you'll probably see them using VS Code and it's good to get familiar with it because if you can navigate your way through VS Code and understand how to work with code bases, terminals, you will find yourself in a much more comfortable position for test automation or navigating your way through complex code bases. Okay, friends, this next tool is like a pretty, pretty new one for me, like the last month, and that is called Tick Tick. If you work at a company where you have to self-organize, you have long to-do lists, and you're having a hard time staying on track, Tick Tick is a really good task management tool that's just create to-do lists, check them off, add notes but don't clutter up the space, but also integrate with Google Calendar. And I've been using TickTick to really help me organize my lists for the day or for the week or set my priorities and be able to visually see them all in one place without being overwhelmed by like notes. So if you need a task management tool, but like not, you know, like Jira or Asana, but you just need like a personal one, and you don't want to use like the default notes app, TickTick -tick is really great for that. It's super simple. You can also add, you can integrate it to your calendar. So you can add tasks that are linked to specific dates or maybe add tasks linked to your meetings. So you can also set due dates for your tasks. You can set reminders and it makes it really easy to pop up a reminder on your computer. You can also flag them for high priority or lower priority. It'll add a little formatting. So it's visually easy for you to see what's on my plate today, what's on my plate next week, and so on and so forth. You can also create Kanban columns. You can make different sections for different projects, different statuses, different areas. The It's like Trello meets Google Tasks meets like Apple Notes, but simplistically. And I've really been enjoying it. And it's also really satisfying to move things around and drag it around, click it that it's done, and really help me stay focused and on task, but also easily jot down things to do in a place so I don't forget about them later. So I mentioned that this app is free, but there's also a paid version. So there are some extra features that you can only get in the paid version, like your calendar view and I think a couple other things. Tick Tick also has themes, so you can change the colors if you want your app to kind of you know, look a little fresh. They also has premium themes for different cities. So if you have the paid version, you can make it look even more. But for the most part, the free version gets you a lot of stuff. There's also a Pomodoro timer, so if you need dedicated 20 minutes, I gotta do this thing. You can set a Pomodoro, a Pomodoro timer either here from the app or you can also do it from your task bar. Um, if you don't wanna have to like navigate right into the app. Okay, this next Chrome extension is for those of you who test web apps and when you find bugs, your developers are like, did you clear your cache? This allows you to clear your cache without having to go through the Chrome DevTools, but it's even better because it allows you to explicitly choose 
which parts of your web app you don't want to clear from or you do want to clear from. So maybe you just only want to clear like your cookies and your cache, but you don't want to clear like your passwords. You can configure all of the different parts of your web app or your browser history as well as the time and then be able to test without running into caching bugs. Timeout is a free tool that forces you to take breaks by locking up your machine with a little message that says, take break. I really like this tool for the days where I have just been working nonstop and I didn't take a lunch, I didn't take a standing break, or I just need to get away from my screen for a few minutes. And this tool really forces me to do that. So I'm not over doing it. I'm not straining myself too much. And I'm remembering that my personal health is important by taking a break. Okay, fam, this next tool is a really big one that I wish I knew about a long time ago. And it is called Requestly. If you have to work with APIs in any capacity and or you have to work with APIs and they're partially built or you work in an environment where you don't have access to certain API responses or requests, you can intercept requests and you can mock requests in an environment that's not like your local dev environment. So let's say you're working on something where you need a specific authorization token, but the authorization API is not built, but you want to be able to test your front end. You can set to where if the web app attempts to make a connection or hit a certain API, you can tell it to pass specific parameters in your web app. Usually this is something you do like in the back end, but to be able to do it on the front end so you can force your front end to get into specific states that otherwise aren't testable is insane. This tool I wish existed years ago. Maybe it did exist and I just didn't know it existed, but this helps you test your front end apps when things are partially built, especially at the API layer, or you don't have access to certain APIs. Seriously, game changer. This is a tool that I only recently learned about and it has completely changed my life and highly recommend it. All right, so that was just all the tools that I'd recommend um, that have really helped me be more productive and more efficient in my QA career. This is definitely not like a definitive list. Um, I've used a lot lot of tools over the years but these are the ones that like whenever i get a new computer and start a new job these are the ones that like i tend to install like the first week so yeah if you have any suggestions or are there or if there are any tools on your list that you love and i missed please leave it in the comments and feel free to suggest them i'll check them out maybe someone else will check them out and that's how we keep people growing if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that the videos that I'm making are helpful. It recommends them to other people. And it just helps me know that I'm being productive with my time off while I'm unemployed. And if you want to check out any more videos about unemployment or about quality engineering, you should definitely check out this video that's right here on the screen. I think you might like it. I hope you like it. And until my next video, I'll see you later. Bye.